So basically what specific gravity is, is um, just a number that gives a relative uh, reading of an object's density in relation to water. So uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at some different kinds of wood and we have some water here. So we're going to be able to see what, uh, how it measures up. So water basically on the scale of specific gravity equals one. So, uh, you know, water weighs one gram per cubic centimeter. Um, so we're going to see how heavy wood is in comparison to that. So, all right, so here, we'll start with uh, balsa. Let me see here. Balsa. So this is like the lightest wood there is. So this should not be too surprising what's going to happen here. It is very buoyant. You notice that pretty much the entire wood is just above the water. And you notice how buoyant it is. If I try to force it down under the water, I don't want to make a splash, so I don't want to push it that far. But if I let go, it immediately comes up. The whole wood just floats to the top. So that's, uh, and Balsa has a specific gravity of, well, it, it's highly var variable depending on, you know, how dense the particular piece of wood is. But on average, it's about 0.15 um, for specific gravity. All right, so we looked at the lightest one, Balsa. Let's take a look at some uh, lignum vitae, which, which is among some of the heaviest wood uh, around. So we'll see what happens with this. And as you might guess, it sinks pretty much immediately. So the specific gravity of lignum vitae is uh, about 1.26. So obviously anything that's above one, uh, which is, you know, denser than water would sink in water. So obviously that one sank. All right. So for the next one, I want to show one that maybe is right on the edge and that would be uh, live oak. So that has a specific gravity more or less right at around one. So we'll see what happens when I try to submerge it in water. I haven't actually tested it before so we'll see if it's going to float or not uh, it'll just depend on what um you know how heavy this wood this piece of wood just happens to be i mean i'm feeling it probably is going to sink i'm just guessing that this feels pretty heavy so anyway let's see what happens specific gravity right at one and i mean obviously let me see here like once you fully kind of break the Break the surface tension. Yeah. So there it goes. Down it goes. So, and then when I lift it up, I mean, it slowly sinks, but it does sink. So, so that's live oak. All right. Well, last but not least, I want to test what I think is probably the densest wood that I know of, that I, the densest wood that I have. And that is going to be wadi wood. So that is up here. And that has a specific gravity of around, on average, 1.43. So i um, not going to leave this one under too long since this is kind of like a cherished sample I have of it. It's not exactly a common wood, so I don't want to hurt its feelings. But we're going to just see uh, what happens when we put it in water. And yeah, it sinks. So there you go. Sinks right down. Real fast. So there you go. Okay. So now that we have all that out of the way, let me just explain briefly why I don't like using specific gravity as a measurement of density. Um, basically, it's because there's two different standards that are in use. Uh, one is for the scientific community and one is for, I guess, the woodworking community. And there's never really a clear indication as to which one is being referenced. Um, so in the scientific community, they have a certain way that they test wood samples. You know, they'll maybe, let's say, take a core sample out of the tree. And the way that they test it is, you know, like when they test, let's say, the, the volume of the wood, it's usually in its green state. The maximum amount, the fibers are totally saturated with moisture. That way they can be sure that it's, you know, the highest moisture level. It's very consistent. And they when they test the volume, they submerge it in water and they just use water displacement. So however much water has been displaced, that's a very accurate way to measure, especially if the, the wood sample is irregular. Um, it's a very accurate way to measure, uh, you know, the wood's volume without, you know, breaking out 
you know, calipers and micrometers and all this other stuff. They just measure the displacement. But when you measure a wood's weight, uh, when it's green, it's very problematic because there's it reaches a fiber set, it's called a fiber saturation point, and beyond that there can be uh, a varying amount of water that's uh, just free water inside the cells that really is would give an inaccurate measurement of the weight. Uh, so the most accurate way that they have uh, to measure the weight, uh, in contrast with the volume, is to have it at zero percent moisture. So they put it in an oven, they call it oven dry, so they put it, at, they basically cook it down to zero percent uh, they, they just monitor the weight until it stops losing weight, which would indicate that it stops losing moisture. And then they know that it's at the minimum weight. So basic specific gravity would be the oven dry weight over the green volume. So it's kind of a double standard, but it's just the most accurate way uh, that the scientific community has to measure wood density. And again, it doesn't even, the, the wood never exists at one point in time at that uh, number. So it's, I mean, to woodworkers, it doesn't make any sense. To scientists, it does uh, because it's very accurate. And, and to, to illustrate this, I just want to show, um, we'll just use uh, Ipe. That's kind of a common heavy wood. Here we go, Ipe. So this has a basic specific gravity of 0.91. Now, that would tell us, if it's only 0.91, that it would not sink in water. So let's see what happens when we put it in this water. And it sinks. So if we're going by basic specific gravity at 0.91, that doesn't compute because it just sank. So uh, that's just an illustration of how mix-ups can occur. So what woodworkers are looking for is a measurement of density that actually shows the state of an actual piece of wood at, let's say, just a typical indoor, outdoor, whatever it is, uh, moisture level. So the, the most common one is 12%. 12% moisture, that's just the average, that's the most commonly quoted one. So when we look, and we, so if you're reading, let's say, a book or whatever, an article, whatever it is, and you come across a number that says, this wood specific gravity is, and they don't tell you what kind of specific gravity, it's, you have to kind of do some detective work to figure out what it is, or basically you just throw it out, it's just a completely worthless number. Um, because if you don't know if it's the basic specific gravity or if it's at 12% or whatever the moisture content is, um, that won't really help you. And, and not only that, but wood can absorb moisture. So let's say, for example, uh, hickory. I don't have any that are, that's green, like wet, fully just straight cut out of a tree. But if you were to take certain kinds of wood, um, like hickory or even some oaks, uh, and put it in the water when it's fully wet, it would sink. Uh, but when it starts to dry out, um, you know, if you dr took dry wood and put it in, it would float. Uh, and so not telling you what the moisture content or what the moisture level of that specific gravity reading is, uh, is again, completely useless. So on my website, you'll see that there's basically two numbers for specific gravity because, you know, people, for whatever reason, they just, they want to have the specific gravity number, even though I personally feel like it's just about worthless for woodworkers. Um, because what you can do, if you want to know the actual specific gravity, and this is kind of what I've done on the website, if you just look at the metric reading, so it's the kilograms per cubic meter reading, and you divide it by a thousand, you'll have a practical specific gravity number for real world, like if you're going to dunk it in water, what's going to happen? That That's the number that you're going to look at. If uh, a wood has, let's say, a specific gravity of 0.8, um, or usually there's significant digits behind that, so 0 0.80, we'll say, if you multiply that by a thousand, uh, that would be, you know, a density, uh, an air dry density of uh, around 800. Uh, kilograms per cubic meter. Um, so what that is, what that number reflects is um, a density reading that is wood with the weight at 12% moisture and wood with the uh, volume at 12% moisture. So it's an actual real existing piece of wood unlike the basic specific gravity and it's going to tell you if you have just wood just lying around your shop um, what density is it going to be at? Uh, so that's why I have two numbers on the website. There's the basic and then there's the 12%. And 
And uh, I include the basic just because it's a commonly referenced number. And, uh, you know, some people like to have it. I know with moisture, for instance, with moisture meters, um, when you have to calibrate it to um, the, the uh, let me get one. You know, I've got this, um, it says species, and you can uh, calibrate the, um, the weight, I guess this, this specific gravity setting, um, that number that they're asking for is basically the basic specific gravity, not, um, not like a, you know, the 12% moisture one. So if you're going to set like a moisture meter uh, to the weight of the wood, you're going to want to use the basic specific gravity. So that's what that number would be for. So there you have it, uh, specific gravity. It's kind of fun to test the wood in the water, but you just got to keep in mind that if you're reading something, you have to make sure uh, that if it says this wood has a specific gravity of X, that you know what kind of specific gravity that it's mentioning. Uh, and more often than not, I just I would say just look at the density. Density is just a, so much easier and straightforward of a number. Uh, you look at, at look for an air dry density. And again, uh, in comparison to water, water weighs roughly 62.4 pounds per cubic foot or um, metric about a thousand kilograms per cubic meter uh, so you can kind of do the calculations based on that to see if it's going to sink or float in water